Welcome to a special episode of Salcedo Paranormal. I'm your host, James Salcedo, and tonight I'm sharing true paranormal stories on the web as uh, we go on with uh, part four of this special series in honor of Halloween and uh, the four-year anniversary of the launch of the podcast. As always, you can find all episodes of the show, along with links to social media and other ways to contact me, at the podcast page, and that is Salcedo Paranormal. Dot podbean.com. That's S A L S I D O paranormal. Dot podbean.com. Always happy to hear from you all whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions or accounts of paranormal experiences, whether they're your own or from others that you trust. Happy to either read those or have you join me on the show to talk about them. Thank you all for listening. Whether you are here for the live streams on Discord, or if you listen to the podcast or YouTube feeds, or on the Trouble Minds Radio Network, KUAP Digital Broadcasting, there you can hear replays of, of um, two episodes of my show every night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, right before Trouble Minds Radio comes on. And as always, I want to thank Michael Strange, host of uh, Trouble, Trouble Minds Radio, for having me on the network and putting my shows up there. Uh, I think that takes care of that. Of course, if you like to support my show, there are different ways to do that. You can always share the show with others and rate and review it on your favorite podcast platform. You can uh, find books I've written over on Amazon, paranormal fiction and nonfiction, including my most recent release of uh, Salcedo Paranormal Experiences. You can sign up for the Patreon page and get one extra episode of uh, True Paranormal Stories from the Web uh, once a week, whenever possible. Uh, and you can also just make donations through PayPal. Support is never expected, but always appreciated, as there are expenses in making these shows, from equipment to research materials to travel expenses in some cases. And so, yeah, we are getting towards the end here of um, this, this special series of shows for Halloween. Uh, so this is part four or five, and uh, let's get to the stories here, these two stories. So let's see here. Get back to the file and uh, go from there. And I almost started this one at the, at the end of the last episode, but I didn't know if we'd have time. So I think it was a good idea to, to save it uh, for the next episode here. And let's see here. Lost my spot. And we'll find it. Okay, here we go. This one says, the paranormal exists. I know that now. There is an active railway track about 300 meters from my house. When I was 18, I came home late from a party around 2 a.m. From my house, I could see a streetlight near the railway, uh, railway track, beyond which was darkness. After parking my two-wheeler and opening the gate, I noticed a faceless lady dressed in all white standing near the streetlight about 100 meters away. I tried to focus on her face, but couldn't see it. Panicking, I quickly, re uh, re quickly moved there we go, my vehicle inside. And when I turned to lock the gate, the faceless figure was now only 10 meters away. The figure appeared to be plain white, faceless, and floating slightly above the ground. Terrified, I ran inside, woke up my dad, and was so scared that I developed a high fever for four days. I am convinced the figure was a ghost and not human. That's an interesting distinction. Uh, despite researching similar incidents, I haven't found much information. Has anyone else ever had a similar experience? I am certain the figure was female based on her body structure. And uh, let me make sure here. Yep, that's where that one ends. Okay. 
I was at a page break. So, um, yeah, that, I thought that was an interesting distinction saying it was a ghost and it wasn't human. I really wonder what they mean by that. But I, again, I think it's important to point out um, words are hard, as I always I say a lot. Uh, labels, I think labels are, we, we do need them to, to an extent, but also I think that they can um people that can have different ideas of what the same words can can mean based on their experiences and or whatever information they picked up over time so i'm not going to say i know for for any in any way what that was that the person saw uh it definitely appeared to to be ghost like in the way it was moved in the way it floated uh in the way it was all white i wonder if that means it was sort of i don't know if it had any other features other than did it have hair like was the hair white was it not white this is also the limitation of finding these posts and sharing them in that they are the way you what you read is what's there usually um and so it's hard to know exactly what even with a description it's hard to know exactly what the person saw <laughs> excuse me so and especially in some cases where this person is telling it um making a post about an experience that happened possibly years ago i think um i don't think we should dismiss those kind of kinds of accounts that people share about experiences that happened years ago. But I think I do think we should keep in mind that our memory is not always going to be the best. We are going to forget things or possibly get things confused here and there. But that's not to say that people don't have experiences that they can't explain. Um, all these are just factors I think that we have to, we have to consider uh, when looking into these things. But anyway, this figure in white, this lady in white, the also the faceless part of it, um, that's a whole thing. I think that could be a whole subject for a show at some point. I know I say that every so often, but and um, I haven't really done a topic-based show in a while. Maybe we'll do, get to that, throw that back in the mix at some point. Um, those are just a little bit more difficult because they take more, take more time and research to do, but um, maybe like once a month. We can do something like that. I think that might be a good idea to uh, to have a, a show like that that focuses on one topic again. Trying to um, trying to figure out the new sort of the the revamped um, lineup of of shows uh, for starting in um, November as I as I'm sitting here actually. So I will let you all know how that goes. But um, but yeah. So I don't know what they saw, but uh, I don't blame them for being. Um, frightened by this figure with no face, but uh, I've, I've heard that before of other encounters, and they it seems to that even though it is frightening, they range from some fa some of these figures that have no face seem to be um, negative, and others seem to be neutral or positive. It, it's really mainly neutral. I don't think I've really heard a ton of accounts where it's really positive, but um, still. I think it's 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 something to look into. So, but yeah, that, that's a that's a wild one there. I'm glad that they the writer was okay after a few days. Makes me wonder if um, they ever had any other experiences before or after that, as I always do when when I read these posts that I find online. Um, just because, again, whether a person has had many experiences or one, either way. Those those um, situations are are fascinating because then you have to wonder why has one person only had one experience while another person has had a lifetime of them. So, moving on to the next uh, next true story here. Uh, let's see here. This one says, "I woke up suddenly around five a.m. one morning, sat up in bed." and looked at my door. The door opened slightly, 
and a glowing figure stepped into the room, but immediately stepped back out and slammed the door again, audibly. The figure had no dis uh, discernible, that's funny, discernible facial features and appeared to be wearing a robe or dress. The figure had a glow similar to how ghosts are portrayed in movies. I realized the event wasn't real because the door opened the wrong way. This happened in my room in an army, army barracks. I'm not sure if this was a hallucination or if it was or if it has a deeper meaning. Can anyone explain this? Has anyone had similar experiences? And that's where that one ends. It sounds like some being was projecting thoughts and or images into the mind of this person after they woke up or maybe even as they woke up. I wonder if maybe they thought they were awake, totally awake, and they weren't when this happened. But the door going the wrong way, uh, as far as I know, doors usually can't do that unless they're designed they're designed to do that. In other words, it's like, um, I don't know what you would call that kind of door, but there are certain doors that will, will do that, will open either way, depending on where people are going um, in a place. But it's not super common, and it doesn't make sense for it to happen in a door that normally couldn't do that. So that one was wild to me because it went from one I mean, me having one idea of what it was to another idea to I have no idea what that was. And um, the door going the opposite direction is an odd detail because it's it's uh, it possibly just as odd or even more odd, uh, more unusual than the apparition that was seen itself in a way. So I don't know what they um what they saw, but the um the whole military base thing as well. There's plenty of reports of activity on those kinds of locations. Um from what appear to be ghosts to cryptids to of course aliens or UFOs in some cases, where people will make posts online but they won't of course they won't share their name. Um, because they don't they, they they don't want to be found out that they were sharing any of this. Um, so but there's all kinds of reports of, around in and around any kind of military bases that are out there. And I mean there's reports that are everywhere, so I don't know what the um I don't place like the ultimate significance on events that happen at bases, at military bases, but I do wonder about why these things happen there, uh, if it has anything to do with the fact that it's a military base or not. I think, in, I mean, obviously that can be a factor in some cases, but also in others where it's built on a place that has more history than that happened before that, obviously, then it could be more linked to that than, than the actual activities or um, the, the military base itself. So. But, um, but yeah, so I'm not sure what to make of that one. Moving on to the next one here. And uh, let's see here. This one says, I used to see entity entities with static faces resembling TV static in both appearance and movement. These entities communicated by nodding yes or no, and sometimes communicated telepathically. These entities had normal uh, dark body outlines, but their faces were static-like. I also came across beings made of a pure, I'm sorry, of a, of a uh, light, no, I can't read, a bright sparkly blue color with no faces at all just entirely blue. I never felt a negative presence 
from these beings. I sensed that each entity had their own personality. So I guess that while some might not be good, I never had bad encounters. I felt that some of the static beings seemed lost and in need of help. Has anyone experienced something similar? What are these beings? And that's where that one ends. And um, here again, we have the no face or the static. I've never heard of a static like face. I've heard of entire beings that appear to be like static. I've heard of that before. Even I, I've heard of um, and read, and I think shared on shows, what appear to be like the the static on a TV screen, but just a rectangle or a square of it floating through an area. People have seen that. I've I've read that before, uh, and I have no idea what those are. But um, but that's wild that the the face, just the face being static. And of course, the figures of blue light that makes me think of my experiences because I didn't see figures, but I definitely saw lights and and felt presences. Presences. Um, yeah, that's funny. I didn't think about that 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 connection there. Talking about um, connections to popular culture, uh, the dredge from the from the movie Titan AE, uh, sci-fi movie. These um, light-based kind of light and I think even like crystal based beings that were the main part of the, like the main villain, at least for a good part of that movie that um, were all about energy. So yeah, I don't know, but um, it is amazing how these things pop up in uh, both experience accounts and then popular culture. And it just makes me wonder where do people, again, where do people get their ideas? Are they tapping into other levels of reality without realizing it and seeing things in their mind and then putting them, putting, making them, turning them into characters in movies or TV shows. I think that's, um, to me, that seems possible, but I, I could be biased because I have done some and still do every once in a while, some, uh, some writing of fiction. So and I think, um, yeah, there's something to that. So, Moving on to the next uh, true story here. This one, let's see here. Okay. Uh, let me scroll down. Okay, there we go. Uh, this one says, multiple, multiple people, I have a hard time saying that word, have claimed to see a spirit in my office, though I have never seen anything paranormal. But I just realized that I may have been hearing paranormal activity, as I often heard whispers or conversations late at night when no one was around. A few days ago, I received a phone call from the office switchboard around 5.30, I'm sorry, not 5.30, 9.30 p.m., but the caller hung up before I could answer. I called back expecting it to be an emergency, but only reached the switchboard and answering service. I realized that in an emergency, someone would likely have called me directly on a cell phone, not the office switchboard. The next day, I asked the receptionist to check the call records and security footage. The records confirmed that a call was made from the switchboard, but security footage showed no one in the office at the time. The last person had left at 7.10 p.m., and the janitor had already finished cleaning and left. So apparently, I am now receiving spirit phone calls. And that's where that one ends. Um, Audio, it's not uncommon for people to have mostly audio experiences. Uh, that is, seems like a lot of what people experience when they don't have a ton of other things going on. The phone call, that's always amazing to me when you have a device that is not 
it does not appear to be be um, to have anyone using it. In other words, the footage does not show anyone or even any apparition or anything unusual going on in the in the room with all the phones. But the re the call records do show that a phone call was placed from that room to the writer's office. So how does that work? Are beings able to sort of inhabit the machines to make the phone calls? Um, and again, there's always the, the possibility of weird time anomalies and things like that going on. But also just I wonder about the, the uh, of course, the phrase that is so well known now, the, the idea of a ghost in the machine. And that's been taken to be, mean uh, different things. But in this case, was there one, whether it's a spirit of a person or not, was there a being inside the phone to make the phone call? Um, I have no idea. But um, also the, the way that the writer mentions that maybe they had experiences without even realizing it at first, that is not un uh, unco uncommon either. Uh, to think, to just sort of write it off and think, oh, there must still be people here. But then to realize after the fact, no, there was no one there. And yet they're still hearing uh, conversations going on. And again, those could be residual. Those could be uh, some kind of weird time crossover with people actually being there in different times, but somehow that is being heard in the present of the writer that's there. So. Um, so yeah, I don't know, but, uh, that's an, that's a neat one there with the, um, the phone. I always find accounts of experiences with devices to be, um, just really fascinating because of the ideas of how does that work? So, uh, so yeah, I think that's all the time we have for episode, uh, stories in this episode, but, um, but yeah, I think, uh, that might be another good thing to do at some point is. A whole, a whole show on that topic of um, how that, of accounts of that and then how that could possibly work. Because it is fairly common. I mean, I've even had, um, I'll never forget the one, the most uh, intense experience I had with that a couple of years ago, a few years ago, uh, involved my, um, my internet uh, device, my, I don't know what you call it, router or whatever, the actual modem, maybe that's the word. Uh, at, at night, I started getting this feeling in my apartment that of the sense of a presence of a being that I did not like, felt felt negative, felt heavy, and it was coming through somehow. It was coming through devices and or the wires and or power cords or something, and it was heading for my my modem. I just had the, this feeling like turn off your computer, turn off your modem, turn all that off. And at first I thought, well, am I imagining this somehow? Because I'm a sci-fi writer when I'm not doing these these shows. But the feeling would not go away. And it just kept on getting worse and stronger. And eventually I said, all right, I'm not, I can't ignore this. So I turned off my computer and I turned off the, the modem, unplugged it really. And um, the feeling passed, and it, and I also got the sense of whoever or whatever this was was not happy that I somehow managed to stop it from getting here in the way it was going uh, by turning everything off. So anyway, that's all the time we have for this episode. Thank you all for listening. I'll talk to you all next time on Salcedo Paranormal. Take care.